Welcome to the Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva, and today we're going to get some insight into sports at the college level. My guest today is Dr. Angel Mason. She is the athletic director from Berry College, and welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so uh, usually, uh, doctor, I usually start my guests um, where they went to college. So where'd you go to school? I went to school at Butler University in Indianapolis. Ah, fantastic. Uh, so let's just go back in time a little. Um, when did it all begin for you to, to go to college? Was it freshman year of high school, senior year of high school? When did it all start for you? Yeah, so for me, I would say it was more around the end of my sophomore year of high school. Um, the high school that I went to, as part of your academics there, you had to apply to at least three colleges. Um, at the time, I, and I don't know if they still do this, we called it, you know, one safety school, which meant that it was in the state of Illinois. <laughs> then you could apply for two other schools that was just a part of the requirements for upperclassmen. So sophomore, at the conclusion of your sophomore year, they start talking to you about colleges and where you might want to go to school and how you look at them. And they had an entire college and career center. Um, and so that is where I actually started those conversations and started looking at schools that I might be interested in. Wow, fantastic. So um, uh, I'm assuming you went to multiple schools to get a, a doctorate degree. Uh, yeah. So, so where'd you go after after Butler? So I was at Butler. Um, then I went to Cal PA um, for my master's program, and then I did my doctorate at North Central University. And yeah, that's just a couple. Like a year ago now, I think. Wow. So you just finished up a year ago on your doctorate. Yes. Yeah. Wow, fantastic. So you, you go to Butler. Uh, what's it like at college? What did you think of it when, when you got there? Well, the first thing I thought is I got to go in the summer. So I started, you know, a couple of weeks after my high school graduation. It was perfect because we had the entire campus to ourselves. Um, there weren't as many students over the summer. Um, we had you know, access to all of the residence halls. Uh, they rotated kind of with summer programming, so lived in a couple of residence halls. And then the majority of the people on campus were student athletes, um, individuals that student taught, or people that were a part of other special programs. So it was a small, close-knit group of us. So that made the transition very easy, especially as an incoming freshman, to be able to have some access to the campus before you know, everyone came back. Gotcha. So now you go to school there. How does one go from graduating Butler and all the other universities to becoming the athletic director at Berry College in, in uh, Georgia? Yeah, I mean, it's, who knows, really, right? <laughs> um, I, I started out from undergrad. Um, I went to school, got a degree in communications, focused on consulting, and that's where I started my initial work. And then um, didn't love the job that I was doing. I had book experience in that, but I didn't have practical experience in it. So I had an idea of what I was going to do, but just didn't have real world experience in it until I was doing it and I didn't love it. Um, so after that, I went overseas and played basketball to try and figure out what I was going to do with my life. <laughs> and it was some mentors from Butler that told me you should get into athletics. And at the time, they thought I should be an administrator. I figured I know basketball. I should be a coach because uh, I didn't think that administrators did much at that time. My, my comment was, well, what do you guys really do? You, you basically came to my games, which obviously it's way more than that. Um, and that's how I first got into athletics. I had an internship at Vassar College in Poughkeepsie, New York, which was an incredible experience. Um, I was there, really got to learn the business of intercollegiate athletics. Um, I spent a couple, six weeks in every area of the athletic department. I was also coaching while there. And then I went back to my alma mater and actually coached there. And there that I decided I wanted to be an administrator because I lost the touch on all the other student athletes being just a coach that I had when I was interning at Vassar. And so at that point, kind of focused on administration um, loved it, 
Um, I love being able to support the development of student athletes, but I look at myself as a coach of the coaches. So I had a couple of different stops. I, I worked at Vassar College. Um, I worked at Caltech. I worked at Hamilton College. Um, and final stop was at Pomona College in Southern Cal, where uh, the athletic department was Pomona Pitzer in the Claremont Consortium before coming here and um, a search firm did the search for the job here and I had seen it online and everything like that. But once I became a finalist and was on campus, you know, it's a, it's a hard place to turn away from. Um, it's beautiful once you get here. So now Berry College, uh, not many people know about it. It's a division three school. Yes. Okay. So uh, tell me a little bit about the school. What's the environment? What, where is it actually located? What, what's it look like? So uh, Barry College is the largest acreage campus in the United States. Um, it is beautiful, aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Um, you will see everything from deer and cows um, walking around campus. Um, we absolutely say that the deer outpopulate the people. Um, the campus sits really in Rome, Georgia, but the campus is Mount Berry. So it, it has its own little zip code wow. <laughs> and, and everything. Um, our own police force, um, the entire campus has one main gate to get in and out of the campus. So, and we have somebody that mans that welcome center 24 hours a day. So it's a very safe campus. Um, we have over 20 trails that go through our campus. So the community is often on our campus using the outdoor space. Um, we have a, the main campus and then the mountain campus. And the mountain campus has the old mill and the water reservoir, um, the Chick-fil-A Institute is up there, uh, Windshape, and where they do different professional development with companies, they do marriage retreats, so on and so forth. So. Our campus is one, beautiful, um, but two, it really is like a community-based space. Um, we invest quite a bit in the community and, and vice versa. The community takes part in our campus quite a bit, which we love. Just, I think we're two years now out from using a couple of acres of the land to partner for, there's a retirement community now that's connected to our campus, um, which people love. It is almost at capacity at this point. Um, and we saw the benefit of that this year with having individuals that live in the retirement community that are coming to our sporting events, that are serving as community mentors for our students through some of our mentorship programs. Um, we have an individual there who had picked up photography as, as kind of an interest years ago, has become incredible at it, and has shared his knowledge base with some of our students that want to get into photography and cinematics and things of the sort. So it really is a place that's built on community relationships, development and growth of our, our young people and our faculty and staff. So now let's get into athletics at, at Berry College. Uh, how many sports do you have? Um, who do they play? That kind of stuff. So we compete in the Southern Athletic Association, the SAA. Um, we are a conference of eight member institutions, and, and we are basically Kentucky, um, Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi. Um, we have affiliate members in football only that are in Texas. Um, so we have two affiliate members that are there. We sponsor 22 varsity sports, and um, equestrian, is the, equestrian is the only sport that is not NCAA. So all of us are NCAA Division III sponsored programs, and we love that. Um, we are a very competitive athletic department. We've only been Division III now um, just outside of 10 years. Wow. And uh, we transitioned from being an NAIA institution, and since that time, we have you know, doubled our sport offering. Um, which is, is something that the college has been extremely supportive of and sees athletics as an additional way to community on our campus. We are we're residential and so all of our students for the most part live on campus. We have a very small commuter group. 
Um, and so we're super competitive though. This year was actually the first year that we won our conferences commissioner's cup. And we were very proud of that. Um, we had our softball program just finished third in the national championship. Our women's volleyball program this year finished seventh in the national championship. Um, we are competing at the top of our conference regularly. Uh, all of our teams are in the top half of the conference and the majority are in the top two. So we're an extremely competitive athletic department and we're competitive academically as well. At this year, we finish a hundredth of a point behind the general population in overall athletic department GPA. So, you know, our teams are above 3.0. Um, this year, we are 3.1, 3.2. 2-1 um, for our entire athletic department. So we're, we're competitive in the classroom and we're competitive in our venues of play. And, and that's the type of environment we like to provide. So now uh, let's get into the students. Um, what type of students are coming to the school? Are they all A average students? Are they uh, B average students? Do, do they want to play a particular sport? Do they play all 22 sports? How, how does it all work? Yeah, so I mean, we have a variety of students that come to Barry. Um, one of the things philosophically from our founder is that Barry was a place that was built to serve those who, who didn't have access to education. So we have students that run the spectrum. We have very strong, high academic students that have access to everything from Ivy League to STEM institutions that will choose Barry because of the other things that we have to offer on top of our strong academics. Um, but we also have students that are first generation. We have students that um, may come from low socioeconomical backgrounds. Uh, we have the ability to support students that run the entire gamut as far as access to higher education. Our student athletes, the majority are one sport athletes. We have a handful of dual sport athletes. Um, I think this past year we were somewhere around 42 or 44 student athletes that played more than one sport. Um, but the majority of them are individual sport athletes. Um, but then you always have some students that are very talented in a variety of ways. And so we like to make sure that they have the opportunity to continue on with the things that they love during their collegiate time. So now as a student athlete coming to Barry College, can you give me a, what they're gonna expect when they get to the school? Give me a year's worth of what happens to these student athletes. Do they come right after they graduate in, in June and, and get there in July or do they start in September? How, how does it all start for them? Yeah, so um, all of our student athletes are on the same schedule as the general population with the exception of fall sports student athletes. So our fall sports student athletes will start school, um, will get to campus between um, a week to two and a half weeks before school starts. And it all depends on the calendar, right? When's your first date of competition? And we do a count back from there. That's based on NCAA rule that we do that. So those are the only student athletes that come to campus before the general population. But when they get to campus, they may have a couple of days um, with just athletics before the rest of the freshmen come to campus. And when the first years come to campus, they take part in the SOAR program that really kind of gets them um, in the weeds with everything that we have going on. And then at the start of the year, they have their freshman programming that takes place and then the rest of the population comes back. And at that point in time, fall sports are in full swing, are practicing very close to their first date of competition. Um, the rest of the student athletes are becoming supporters, figuring out freshman year and their classes transitioning to the difference between high school and collegiate rigor. Um, and so they're figuring those things out, but we're also providing them access to what our academic support services are. We're getting students signed up to what their study hall regimen will be. That's a part of what we do in our athletic department. Um, they're finding out through our student athlete advisory committee who their buddy teams are and them supporting one another in that way. And then we have a couple of full department things that we do. So we bring everybody together, which is 
let them begin to identify other student athletes so that they have community outside of just their team. And then as the year goes on, you know, you start having different opportunities for them to support one another. Um, we have dead times right before exams. So we have our study break days. We also take a break from athletics during those days. And then after exams, campus kind of shuts down with the exception of our athletes and those students that are a part of our special programming, like our Gate Scholars program, they stay on campus. Then we have campus to ourselves basically for a little while again. And we have lots of events. We bring the campus community in. Our student athletes throughout the year are going out into the community. During that first break, we do bell ringing with the Salvation Army. And that's an annual thing that we do to help raise money for those that are in times of need. And then we take a little break. It's like a pause. <laughs> I think we get a, a total of around four days that we really are dead for um, the holiday. And then everybody starts coming back, trickling in little by little, including our spring sports. And then the same thing kind of repeats itself. For that second semester, we wind up the end of our year with our all sports reception. It's a time to be able to celebrate all of our student athletes and their accomplishments and highlight our senior class and their accomplishment over their four years here um, and the legacy that they leave behind for their classmates and, and future students of their programs to try and carry on. Nice. Now, uh, a big question from parents usually is uh, the cost of colleges. Um, Division three don't have scholarships um, and schools are expensive these days. Um, how does, how does a, a school like Berry College uh, compete with schools that have scholarships and things of that sort? Yeah, so um, we have a lot of ways in which we compete. Obviously for in-state students, they have access to state dollars that are given. Um, the HOPE scholarship is one that we have here year. So they have access to those. But what I will say that is exceptional at Barry is that we have a great deal of academic scholarships that we give out. Um, you apply for those. There are interviews for those. Um, we actually have like a day, a scholarship day where people come during their senior year and they can actually present at, in different ways for some of those scholarships. You know, if you also have you know, you're in the arts and you may be a musician of sort. There are different things that are connected to individuals that have those talents. So we have other ways that people can get resources. As well, we have our student work program, um, which is very different than you'll see around the country. Um, this is not federal work study. This is Barry College's work program that from the great hands of donors and alums, the investment from the college in our operating budget annually, we give out the opportunity for students to work to help pay for their tuition. Um, and students take a great advantage of that. And a big part of that is so that student athletes and students in general are not graduating with an obscene amount of debt. So those type of things are things that we have in place to be able to help afford the cost of, you know, education at Barry. Now, what are some of the uh, majors that a lot of the students are, are taking these days? Well, um, business is still big. Um, Equine and like animal science for us is huge. Uh, nursing is big for us here. Uh, education is big for us here. But I think the other thing that's really cool here is that we have a great deal of students that are kind of building their own curriculum. Um, you know, we have lots of students that leave Barry that want to go into entrepreneurship. Um, we have a student athlete, well, she's an alum now, but she was a student athlete for us that had started her own um, business, Jewelry Cakes. And she started it before she got here. She gained additional skills here and resources through one of our entrepreneurship uh, competitions where she was able to then help build her business while she was here. And then she stayed on and, and actually got her master's through our MBA program. and is her, her business is booming. She's doing weddings and she's doing special events. So we have the opportunities 
actually begin to do the work of what they want to do long term and in our life works program helps develop that you know part of our motto here is the head the heart and the hands and i think all institutions are dealing with the head right we also offer great academics um, here I think every institution is trying to provide some part of the heart. That's why you have such large um, student affairs areas to support all of the additional things that students want to grow and build as individuals. Um, but I think the hands part is where we separate ourselves. You know, we actually provide students the opportunity to be doing work that they want to do for their real life, um, as well as do work that has transferable skills for any work it is they want to do. We have students that do everything from work in grounds and the aesthetics of our campus to students that work in the president's office and are helping to schedule board meetings and are contacting professionals for interviews and are helping the way in which we move forward as an institution. So our campus doesn't actually function as a business entity without our students. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, so students that, that come to school there, uh, how do they find the school? Do they just go on the website? Do they come and visit? How, how does everyone usually find the school? Um, I would say a lot of students end up finding out about of us, uh, finding out about us via word of mouth. Um, we actually do have a strong alumni base. Um, we're regionally very strong, so we get a lot from that. Yes, students will go on the website and check things out. Um, we have virtual tours online that you can see. In today's day and age, they are following us on social media. So it's very important what we're posting on our institutional Instagram um, and Twitter. We get lots of follows and hits there. Um, but until you are actually on this campus, seeing it in person, I don't think you get the opportunity to fall in love with it. <laughs> that is a big part of this campus. You fall in love with what it looks Looks like you fall in love with the feeling that you get from the community members. You fall in love with the interactions that you get. Like, you know, people know that you're not a Barry student when you're coming to visit, but you feel like a Barry student when you're here. And, and if that's the type of community that you want to be in, then Barry's an exceptional place for that. Fantastic. Well, we're coming to the end of our show. And uh, usually I ask my guests, uh, what advice do you want to give to the parents and the students that are watching this? What advice would you like to give them that are interested in coming to Barry College? You know, what would you like to say? I would say first and foremost, as you think about what you want for your college experience to be like as a parent, what you want for your child's experience to be like, think about what those important factors are and if they are preparation for real life, if they are learning the skill sets to be independent, if they are connected to being able to build community wherever you are, if they're connected to a strong academic community that also has the supports in line to to make anybody be able to move forward wherever they have their gaps, right? We're not all great at mathematics, but there's a level of that that you need. Barry is a place that you should consider. Um, and we also are a very safe community, which was important for me. Um, and I find to be very important for many of our families as they come and they're coming through the Welcome Center, we're aware of who's on our campus, we're aware of what you know, we have in our community and following you know, everything that has taken place over the last two years with COVID, the fact that we were able to be on campus as a brick and mortar the entire time and allowing our students to have in-person classes with their professors and still having access to building a community, those are the type of things that you should be looking for and evaluate your ROI on that. And Barry has been able to do that in an exceptional fashion. Right. A fantastic uh, words. Thank you very much. So thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it as well. Yeah. So you've been watching The Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva. Until next time.